All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Since you two, this is Pastor Dow. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I've had somebody to tell me in the past before, and it's not important who said it, um, but I think it's very important uh, that we pay attention to what the person said. <clears throat> and what they said to me was this. They said, Pastor Dow, you have taught me how to get past my cognitive dissonance. Um, you taught me how to uh, view things with an open mind uh, so that I can step back, sit down for a moment and listen to truth, apply logic and reasoning, but to put the truth of the Holy Spirit before and above all things. And, and of course, you know, I understand where they're coming from because I think that that is a strength of mine is that I have the ability to listen and to hear anytime someone is bringing anything in front of me, whether they agree or disagree. You know, it's actually healthy. In, in, in um, the type of society that we have today for people to be objectively disagreeable. That doesn't mean you have to be enemies. But you notice the, the, the people who have a lot of uh, pride and ego challenges in front of them, it's hard for them to even begin to think that somebody else's perspective or point of view could actually be right. I mean, think about that. Can you imagine that? It, it, what they're actually saying could actually be right. I mean, because, you know, we have, uh, all of us have made this mistake in the past. We have assumed the way we function, the way we think, and the way we believe is right and is the truth. And we've limited ourselves from growth. We've stunted ourselves from growth, especially when we think that what we already know is the be-all and end-all. That, that's why um, that, that I uh, like having civil dialogue, civil discussions in the place and time where it's warranted and needed. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've had enough discussions with irrational people uh, and, and people who, uh, while they are trying to say that they represent the truth, the truth is all you hear is an opinion. You actually hear their opinion and they actually place their opinion above truth. And then I've been through the people who try to use the Bible as a means to represent what they call the truth. But really, truly, what they're doing is representing their own book of the law. And they're using the Bible to try to manipulate, to coerce, and to control other people. And, you know, people should have, and they should be afforded the opportunity to be able to search and check out everything. Um, I've been to the place many, many times before where I believed that something was right. And of course, when you believe it's right and that's all the light that you have for it, you're supposed to live and you're supposed to walk and talk and, and, and you're supposed to contend and you're supposed to um, uh, continue uh, to defend what you believe to be is right until proven otherwise. And that's another problem that we have in this society today is that um, you can't never get to the part until proven otherwise because anytime that you show somebody where they're missing the mark and they're wrong, uh, their ego is so inflated and so big. Um, and and they um, they just simply don't get it. I'll give you an example. You know, I, I um, got a lot on my plate. I know a lot of people, they, they don't understand what I all have on my plate. And... Um, I had a brother <clears throat> shortly after Shabbat message, and I greatly appreciate it too. Um, he knew that I knew the genealogy and the lineage and stuff, but, but what I did was I misspoke in one instance. And I think, you know, uh, being a human being, I'm, I'm afforded the opportunity, even though I don't like to take that opportunity. Uh, but I'm afforded the opportunity to to make an error sometime or another, am I not? I mean, after all, we all say we're not perfect, isn't that right? But we're going on to perfection. 
But I had a faithful brother, Brother Vernon. He called me up and said, Pastor, you know, you said Rebecca was a Syrian. I said, yes, she is from Syria. But she's uh, she was uh, in the land of Syria, and she received the designation of Syrian because that's how people um, were identified back then. But I also knew that uh, Abraham had sent his servant to go find a wife for his son, and, and they had to come of his of their own seed of the line of Eber. Um, but apparently what I did, and I have to go back and listen to it because I, you know, I'm in the heat of moment of preaching, uh, but I take I take his word, his brother's word for it because um, he, he's usually a pretty studious guy of the scripture. And he said, well, you know, Pastor, you, you know, you said she was a Syrian, um, implying that she was one of another nation. And of course I said, wow, if I, man, I made a mistake, man. I, that's definitely not true. That's an untrue statement right there. And, and I'm glad that he actually um, voiced where I missed it in that area right there. Um, because I, it's very few instances and there's very few places where I actually miss it. But I, I bought this up to tell y'all that even though you're a preacher and teacher and stuff, you're not above um, the correction of the word and the truth when it's right. And all he was doing was really confirming that I really knew and if, and if I didn't know, he he was already in the mode that he was going to entreat me and show me. And, and of course, I listen to my brothers and sisters very carefully. I don't sit there and play the be-all, end-all, and I'm the authority, and I'm the king, and I'm the pastor. You shut up. I, I, I don't do that junk. That's a bunch of nonsensical foolishness is what that is. Um, and, and and you're definitely setting yourself up for, fa for failure if you ever try to adopt that type of position and take it because... You know, there are people out there that genuinely, highly, truly love you, um, and they're not trying to diminish your place or nothing like that. Uh, but however, if there's times that they need clarity, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. And so I think what we have in the, in the generation we're dealing with now is a maturity problem. I think our problem is, is the lack of maturity. Um, and, and if we believe something so staunchly and so strongly, anytime Anybody comes with some opposing uh, perspective or point of view, the first thing we do is dismiss them as ignorant, as if they don't know what they're talking about. Only later on to experience, it may be a year or two later, we have to experience humble pie because at least it was brought to your attention. And now that it's brought to your attention, now it's in your court, now you got to do something with it. Um, hallelujah. And then, of course, when you have to do something with it, uh, chances are you might have to say, hey, I'm sorry, but ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, there are times when we are literally sorry. That's just the truth. <laughs> anyway, the start of this video was all about, um, you know, someone actually coming thanking me for helping them get out of this cognitive dissonance. Um, and, and, you know, I often said it once before again, and if you want to understand the, the term for cognitive dissonance, Dissidence, do you need to let me let me best explain cognitive dissidence by trying to give you an analogy for you to draw a conclusion from so you'll be able to understand that word. Um, it's a psychological term, it's a word. And and what it is, for instance, let's say you know that smoking is bad for you. You know it's gonna damage your health, you know uh, you're probably gonna develop emphysema. Uh, you, you probably are just simply not going to do your body any good um, by picking up this bad habit of smoking cigarettes. And more than anything, you're destroying yourself and you're destroying your health. Um, I don't care how cool you may think you are, how addictive you are, it's better for you to put that thing down. Now, you've tried many, many times and you failed many, many times, but you know, and then you get to the point to where you just literally give up. But before you reach that point of giving up, You've already known, you've educated yourself of the dangers and hazards of smoking cigarettes. So sometime between that cigarette hitting between your fingers and you lighting it, and by the time you travel from this point to this point, you have got to actually, some way, somehow, in your mind, convince yourself that this cigarette is not going to be as harmful for me as I once believed. And that acceptance right there allows you to continue on in your destruction simply because of your agreements. And when you make agreements with anything on this earth, 
the power of agreement is very, very strong. It's almost like contracting. Um, and I tell you, see, some there's a distance going on between this point and this point. This point and this point. And that justifying is still not going to change the outcome. But after all, you have convinced yourself and you have reasoned in your selective deduction of your own mind that what you've done is not going to be that bad. That is a good example of cognitive dissonance. Hey, Salome, y'all, I got to get back. Y'all have a good day. We got work to do on the land. Keep the faith.